Welcome everybody to another episode of the Special Pipe Analysis. In today's video, we'll be taking a deep dive look at the white cart and gliders pipe. There's a lot of metagame significant items in this pipe and we are going to go to all new depths of detail as you've come to love and expect here on the channel. And along with that, we're going to be carrying context to other parts of the game that can benefit you uh, whether or not these items are ones that you're invested into or whether you're looking to go into this pipe and pull on them. So if that sounds good to all of you, please do share your support with the channel by leaving a like on this video and subscribing. It really goes a long way in facilitating future content of this quality. To provide an overview of the five carts that are available in this pipe, I'll put a chart to the right. And what this does is it shows the assumed value or the retro value of these carts along with the nitro value. So each bar in the graph is going to be its total value uh, broken down by uh, the composition of courses that they each have. Starting with the oldest item, which is the Platinum Taxi. It was introduced right around the first New Year's uh, that this game celebrated back in 2020. And that has 14 courses of assumed value and four Nitro courses. So this is one of those year one syndrome carts, only 18 total tracks of value. Next up, we have the White Turbo Yoshi, which is a newer cart. This one was introduced in 2021 in the Yoshi Tour, along with White Yoshi. And this one has 18 tracks of assumed value. Five courses are nitro value, so that's a total of 23 courses. So uh, th this cart isn't very significant. Uh, it's been in a number of pipes, not only that one, but it was also in the tricolor pipe that was in the Paris tour last summer, as well as it was offered in the tier shop which is how I actually obtained it from my account. I spent the 10,000 coins in the tier shop for it. So uh, the fact that they presented that item in the tier shop at that time for Royal Raceway RT, one of the weeks it was in ranked mode, instead of another standard cart, such as the Cact Ice, really kind of forecasted that the value for the White Turbo Yoshi wasn't going to be significant relative to other carts that were introduced around that general time period in 2021. The next cart that we have to take a look at is the Rambi Runner. Now this is a specific favorite on my account, as well as many others out there. It's a significant player in the metagame that we're going to take a much deeper look at in just a few moments. And right here you can see some of the reasons for why that is the case, because it has 24 assumed value courses along with five Nitro courses. So that's a total of 29 courses overall. Really one of the powerhouse carts that exist and will likely be the emphasis of the standard cart selection from the high-end variety in this pipe. The White Snow Skimmer was released in Vancouver 2 just this past December and it has 17 courses of assumed value along with five Nitro courses for 22 tracks overall that it covers. And being that this was an item that was fairly recent and it debuted along with Penguin Luigi, uh, there was a feeling that it perhaps could have been a stronger cart than it's turned out to be up to this point. It's unclear how long its lifespan will continue uh, the fact that it is in this pipe means that it could receive a few more buffs to get uh, a little bit of the value back that it's been lacking up until this point. And last but not least, we have the initial value of the White Cruiser. And it starts off very good because it has eight courses of value and all of that is assumed value. So um, wonderful start to this cart. We'll be taking a deeper look at uh, what those courses entail. Uh, the metagame relevance of this cart, as well as the projections, right? We're going to be taking a look at a few analogs uh, in order to find out just what are the fully realized expectations for this cart. I often run out of positive things to say about the Rambi Runner. And this chart to the right is the manifestation of a desire to find just 
how much of a force the Rambi Runner is in the kart metagame. Now these are based on simulations that were run through the coverage optimizer tool. It will be available to the public soon and currently running requests through our Discord server for free. A link is in the description below. What this graph shows is the number of optimal combinations for different population sizes of carts that you're looking to invest into. So what we're taking a look at is cart combination sizes from two all the way up to 12, a dozen, which is a large amount of carts that covers the vast majority of the assumed value courses in Mario Kart Tour. The bars in gray represent the number of optimal combinations of which the Rambi Runner is a part of. And all of the bars in blue represent optimal combinations in which the Rambi is not present, right? That there are alternative options for that population size for cards. What's remarkable here is that the optimal combination for cards includes the Rambi Runner all the way up through a population of eight cards. So that means that the optimal combination for cards for just a combo, uh, that is a duo of cards, is the Tanuki cart and the Rambi Runner. And then if we expand that to look at three cards, it's the aforementioned that we've had in so many features of the Rambi Runner, the Gold Pumpkin cart, the Purple Bunny cart, which was recently in a pipe, and the Rambi Runner. And as we go through the combinations of carts, shifts, but all the way through, there's a common thread, and that is the Rambi Runner. Uh, it's included in all of these optimal combinations uh, in which you can't receive any additional course coverage for that limited selection of carts without using this one. So it is a very central player in the cart metagame. The only spots that we see divergence from that is for uh, carts with a population size of nine, 11 and 12 and still the vast majority of those still include the Rambi Runner in optimal combinations. However, the, there are alternative combinations that become present at those stages. But even still, the Rambi Runner with a cart population size of 9 still has 75% of the optimal combinations or 3 out of 4. If we look at cart sizes for 11, has 12 out of the 13 optimal combinations. So that's 92% still of those combinations, as well as for a dozen carts, it has four out of the seven combinations, which is 57.1% of those combinations still use the Rambi Runner. One of the main reasons for its success in these combinations is also a reason why some folks out there might not want to be investing into it, or if you do pull it, you might look at your spreadsheet and say, hey, you know, this doesn't present a significant amount of value for my account. And that's because the Rambi Runner presents a very wealthy selection of old retro courses, right? So the composition of those courses melds very favorably with other combinations of carts that cover a lot of these newer courses like the aforementioned gold pumpkin cart and the purple bunny, right? They don't step on each other's toes in terms of these overlaps because they were released at uh, different times and with different selections of courses that were available. The expectations for what you're going in on on the Rambi Runner has to be tempered by just what exactly it's presenting for your account. Another feature I included in this graph is the overall course coverage in terms of percentage for each combination size. So this is very valuable information in general, but it has direct implications to what the Rambi Runner contributes as well as a part of those larger cart combinations in order to get 50% of all of the assumed value courses covered, which is now at 197 courses with the addition of the three coconut mall variants, we can see that it takes a selection of five carts in order to do that. And then if we add in another additional five carts, so that's with a cart selection size all the way up to 10, um, it doesn't double the number of courses, and that's because the, as we add more cards into the combination, the number of overlap courses rises incrementally, right? So 
in that situation then it's only just breaking 80 percent of the total assumed value courses if we expand that up to the maximum in this graph with a dozen cards that will cover 175 of the 197 assumed value courses which represents 88 percent overall we can see that there are still some combinations of cards that form optimal course coverage without the Rambi runner so if you are a player that's in that situation where you have this on your account or you've pulled for it and still haven't leveled it up that doesn't mean that you still can't achieve the maximum amount of efficiency through using your tickets however I will say that the Rambi Runner presents the vast majority of optimal coverage for your account, which is to say that um, if you don't have this kind of optimal coverage, what it essentially means is that you have to add another cart into the selection in order to cover the same number of courses, which in the case, if you are looking at things in terms of level six, that's nine high-end cart tickets. But if you're looking at things from the level eight perspective, then that's 22 additional high-end cart tickets. So looking at things from this optimal perspective is a way to really secure and maximize the usage and acquisition of these very precious high-end tickets. Now let's talk about the brand new cart that's in this pipe. And it's a spotlight too. So if you have 225 rubies, you can guarantee access to this card. And then what are the expectations for it, right? Because we can only see the eight courses of starting value. And of those eight courses, four of them are coin box courses. However, I would caution that the white bruiser cart is an average cart size, right? So this isn't one that you are gonna go into and pull for this because it has a massive size hitbox and it's gonna get the maximum number of coins on these courses, right? This is gonna be one that you might be looking into in order to secure future value on your account for some of these new courses that will be coming in. As is always the case, special pipe debuting items have the paywall buffing favor earlier in their lifespan as opposed to later in their lifespan. Of note though, in terms of the overlaps that it possesses, it does have two with the Crowley cart, which is a massive size hitbox, right? It's in the top five for hitbox size and that covers the coin box track. So in that situation, it's going to significantly favor the Crowley cart, and that's going to be on Royal Raceway, the normal variant. The other overlap that it has is on Rosalina's Ice World R. On Royal Raceway R, it overlaps with the B Dasher Mark II, which is a larger size hitbox and is also a cart that's seen in quite a few of the optimal combination of carts previously shown with the Rambi Runner. If you've invested into some newer carts, such as the Warrior Wagon, well then it's going to run into overlap on Bowser's Castle 1R. And if we're taking a look at Rainbow Road, then it's going to have overlap with some uh, original carts that have been in the daily selects like the B Dasher and the Bad Wagon that some folks out there may already have at a considerable level. Turning our sights now to the future value projections for the White Bruiser, we have to take a look at some possible analogs, right? So we can form out the range of possible outcomes that we are likely to see with a cart of this kind. And honestly, the selection of carts that debuted in a Spotlight 50 pipe is actually quite limited. Uh, just looking back in the last year and a half, there's only been two of them. One of them is very recent with the Black Turbo Yoshi that occurred in the two and a half year celebration two tours ago in the Yoshi tour. So uh, the value on that is not fully realized. The one prior to that was with the Frostwing, right? So that was during winter uh, 2021. Otherwise, we have to turn to gliders to fill out some of the other possible projections that we could see here. So we're looking at things like the record setter, things like the glittering parasol, which is also in this pipe. So this provides a little bit of context for then when we go into gliders uh, to kind of tie things together there. In addition to things like the ship's wheel and the gold home field glider. Now, since the selection size is so limited for carts and the 
ecosystem for carts is different from that of gliders. So what I did is I set the opacity on the lines differently for the glider and I really wanted to put an emphasis on the carts, although that selection is quite narrow. So what we can say really, and it's not much, is that this cart will have 20 plus courses of value, right? And it doesn't seem like it's going to reach the stratosphere because if we take a look at the best item that's debuted as a spotlight in a 50 pipe, well, that's with the ship's wheel, right? And that has just over 30 courses of value. Many of them are nitro courses, but the ship's wheel still forms a lot of optimal glider combinations thanks to its nice composition of courses that it has. But otherwise we're seeing items that end up really in the middle 20s in terms of value. So uh, the expectations for this white bruiser then is that in all likelihood it will end up, you know, in that middle of the pack kind of area with front loaded value. It does have potential to be uh, sensational on the level of the ship's wheel, but it also has this uh, possibility of being along the lines of a dud as, as the frost wing has been up until this point. The only thing that we can really say with certainty when it comes to these spotlight debut items is that uh, by obtaining it now, you will have a cart that will have access to brand new courses and give you that coverage in the next several months. And then beyond that, the value will likely peter out, okay? So uh, this could be a superstar cart, but the chances of that are very low, right? In all likelihood, it's going to be an average cart that's going to carry you uh, for the foreseeable future. Now let's talk about the gliders. Well, uh, the chart on the right will have the basic overview of each of their values. The cloud glider has been in the daily selects for eons now, okay? So that is one of the high-end selections there. So for some of you, you may already have it as, at a significant level. Otherwise, it presents the kind of value that we would expect for a year one item that is readily available in the shop. It only has 18 courses overall, 15 of which are assumed value, and then we have the three nitro courses. And right next to that, we have another year one glider, the Great Sail, which has 18 courses as well, 14 assumed value, and four in nitro. Despite its low track count, the Great Sail did have a really good run of it back in the day because it did cover courses that were repeatedly used in ranked mode, right? Like the Royal Raceways of the world and the Airship Fortresses. But the lifespan of those courses and this glider are uh, greatly in the rearview mirror. Not that it's entirely useless, but this is uh, definitely taking a back seat to the other value that's represented here. The Candlelight Flight represents a significant amount of value debuted as a pack item and then it was released in a spotlight pipe the one that we went into for the yellow off-roader I'll put a card up above in case you missed out on my most recent set of pipe poles it was a lot of fun and I managed to snag this glider along with it so uh, this one presents 27 courses of value 21 of the assumed kind and six nitro courses so uh, currently the composition of courses that this one covers marks a lot of the newer generation of courses that we're seeing repeated tour in and tour out. So it's been very powerful in terms of all cup ranking in the last several tours, as well as has had several ranked features. Even newer is the glittering parasol, the aforementioned glittering parasol, debuted in the Singapore tour in a special pipe as a spotlight. It has a total of 19 assumed value courses, along with four nitro tracks for a total of 23 overall. But I must say that the glittering parasol, uh, the growth of that, along with the composition of courses that it's had, hasn't really set it apart from the pack. So it's just one of the bunch in this current generation of gliders. There's still value to be had on this though, because it's not going to cap out at 23. I don't see the value as being fully realized on this glider yet, which means there's still a chapter to write on its history. And uh, perhaps it is one that will pick up um, a few more courses in the coming month or so. And then we come to the most recent one, which was a pack debut 
And now this is the first time it's accessible to the general audience of Mario Kart Tour through the pipe and it's not spotlight. So we have a special little slide for that and what that means for the value. Uh, we can see here just how impressive of a start it's had folks. It has 18 courses of assumed value and only one nitro course. So this is meat and potatoes uh, for our terminology here. Uh, very exceptional value to this point and it's still relatively new folks. It's ready to take to the skies and soar even further. Next up, we're going to take a look at uh, what the candlelight flight presents in terms of optimal combinations. Uh, and that's kind of to offset uh, the, the powerhouse that it's been in the current metagame, right? With the current selection of new courses that have been brought in, like the Bowser's Castle, the Wario Shipyard, you know, it, it's had that very strong concentration of those courses. However, when we put it together with different pairings, we see actually that um, it suffers quite a bit still, uh, whether or not there's still value to pick up, and then in which case this one would be a player uh, having a seat at the table of optimal combinations, that still remains to be seen. But the best that we can do right now is this trio right here, and that is along with the 8-bit Super Mushroom Glider and the Dragon Wings that presents 68 courses of assumed value out of the 197 that are currently available, and that is five courses off the mark of the optimal combination, which also features the other two gliders in addition to the Starry Great Sail. So that is the optimal trio of gliders that you can have for your account at this given time. And all told, that accounts for 93.2% of the effectiveness of using the candlelight flight in your inventory all leveled up, as opposed to that of the starry great sale. And we see this trend play out as we increase the population size of gliders that we're willing to invest into uh, with regards to optimal course coverage, all the way up through a combination of 10 gliders, we see that the candlelight flight is always five courses less than the optimal combination. So at this given moment, the candlelight flight needs to do more to take flight and take that seat at the table uh, in order for it to stake its claim in a long-term sense, right? Uh, at this given moment, it's a hot item to invest in. That much is true. However, by doing so, informing your account that route leaves a situation where you're going to have outstanding courses uh, that could be covered and that would require additional investment into another glider, right? So. Um, if you're looking to cover the most for the least amount of tickets, this is obviously a great glider to have, but it might be one to hold off investing into whenever possible, just to make sure that the value on that gets realized without then having to uh, make additional investments on your account uh, to compensate for any shortcomings that could exist in terms of its portfolio of courses that it can cover along with the other top gliders in the game. And lastly, we get to this slide, which was a lot of fun to make. And it really, really highlights the fidelity with which some of this information uh, can be used with to project future value. Because when we find a population of items that match the same kind of history and progression as we do here, um, you know, this is where we put out our value alerts on things. So uh, this is the one to keep an eye out for folks. And that is in the way of the wonderful wings. So what I did here is I narrowed down the selection in the last year, the last 12 months for gliders that debuted in packs. So they were originally pay exclusive items. And then they made their follow up appearance in the form of a non spotlight special pipe. And this is the selection of gliders that we get from that. We see that there's the Aurora Wings, the 8-bit Super Mushroom Glider, which we can see is essentially, in terms of optimization, the number one glider in the game currently, as well as the Magic Parasol, the Polka Dot Manta Glider, the 
8-bit bullet bill, which was an enormous powerhouse several months ago, and still forms optimal combinations of gliders still to this day, in addition to the Story Great Sale. And right here we can see that every single one of these gliders that followed this unique history uh, with this limited access, all of them ended up with upper level 20s into the 30s in the way of its course coverage. Given that the Wonderful Wings has already accumulated so much assumed value and it can be projected forward even more given that we know that the next tour has Koopa Cape and likely to be a, an abundance of additional retro courses being dumped into Mario Kart Tour at a feverish pace this year. This one is going to be a powerhouse, not just for now, but likely over the next year, uh, given the amount of attention that's brought to these newer courses and the way in which the Wonderful Wings already covers the ones that it's had exposure to. With all that being said, the Wonderful Wings is the prize of this pipe. So then what would your odds be of obtaining it since it's not a spotlight? Well, let's open up the app and take a look at that, shall we? There we go. Nice, beautiful images uh, to entice the pull, but is it worth it? We're gonna answer that right now based on a, a range of possible situations that you might be encountering, right? Is it worth spending your rubies on this pipe? Well, we can see it has a spotlight, right? It has the white bruiser. This is going to be a cart that's going to have front-loaded value, the long-term value on it. Um, it could power your account if it's in a certain situation, but uh, there aren't a lot of hallmarks for this kind of cart being like a massive superstar for everybody out there, right? So this is one you could certainly pass on this pipe if it's just about the white bruiser. That is not uh, the main focal point uh, for going into this pipe, right? So. The only one that 225 rubies can actually secure is that thing, right? So then if we're more interested in things like the Rambi Runner or the Wonderful Wings, then, uh, you know, what kind of chance would we have? Well, let's take a look at the details to see here. 12% um, high-end odds, which is phenomenal, but the odds are a little bit different for carts and gliders, and that is because of the one spotlight. So you're only gonna have a selection of four carts in the high-end standard pool here that's going to be with the white turbo yoshi the platinum taxi the rambi runner and the white snow skimmer there but you're only going to get two of those out of those four and then if we scroll down to the gliders there's a selection of five of them so all five you get three out of the five right and they can be duplicates of course so it could be the cloud glider we have the wonderful wings the glittering parasol there the Great Sale and the Candlelight Flight. But remember, you could pull all three of some of the old accessible ones. So then what are our odds? Let's swing it over to the calculator and see uh, how many rubies could it take to get a reasonable percentage to obtain some of these things, right? So I always like to start off with a single drain. And I'm gonna start with carts on this one, right? Like, let's say if, you know, looking at the data that we presented here and in past videos, Say the Rambi Runner is a must have for my account. And for some folks out there, it, it really could be a must have. Um, in which case, if you have 225 rubies, well, you're gonna see two uh, high-end carts from that selection, right? You can see more, but I always go with the worst case scenario when looking at these things, right? Because those two carts could be at the bottom. Uh, of course, if you're beating the pipe, if you have more high ends per pull, on average, you're gonna to wanna to reset and that will maximize your odds. So your situation could be better than this. This is the worst case scenario. And then that's the best way to look at it because then you can rest assured that uh, your odds are this or better, right? So um, in that selection of four cards, three of them are not the ones that we want, right? If it is looking for the Rambi runner in this particular case, so we would do three divided by four. And then we would set the exponent here to two because that represents the two high ends for the cart selection, the number of trials that we'll be taking out of the pipe. And then what are our odds? Well, we can see it's only 43.8%. That's pretty rough. Um, not a great chance in order to pick up the Rambi runner in just one drain of the pipe. So then let's say, hey, 
I got 450 rubies just waiting to go into this. Then what are my odds then in a worst case scenario? Well, it's the same calculation then. It's still three out of the four that we don't want, the ones that aren't the Rambi runner. But then we're gonna actually switch the exponent, right? We're gonna set it to four, and that's two from the first drain through, and then two from the second drain. And in that case then, our odds increase to 68.4%. That's still pretty rough, folks. That's roughly two to one in your favor. Um, very borderline for spending your rubies. And to consider that is 450 rubies that uh, if you had that amount secured during the Bowser versus DK tour last year, you were your odds would have been 100% in order to obtain that item. So there's definitely a bottomless pit potential to this. I mean, let's just say if you have 900 rubies, like let's just go absolutely wild and see just you know how ruthless can these pipes be, right? let's set the exponent then to eight that would be four times through the pipe oh my goodness please don't do that folks unless uh you know you're doing it very responsibly well there we go there's a 90 percent chance effectively of getting it still if you pony up 900 rubies 10 percent of you out there will not get this card okay so uh remember that's that's a worst case scenario so you can look to find ways to increase the odds uh, incrementally in your favor as you go through these pipes. But on the whole, uh, that's the situation. That's what it could be, which is really quite remarkable. So now let's turn our sights over to the wonderful wings, right? Maybe it's a more wonderful situation given that we have three gliders in the selection. But remember, there's an extra one in, the, in, that, uh, in the pool, right? So now there's five. So. Uh, just if your sole focus is on the wonderful wings, then what would be the odds? So we start off with the same one minus one represents the 100% full range of outcomes that we could see here. And then only looking at the wonderful wings, then four of the items are not. So it's four divided by five in this case. And we're going to set the exponent now to three. Those are the three high-end gliders that we would get from one drain of the pipe. And we can see it's very close to what it was for the Rambi. It's still pretty low, 48.8%. It's really punishing out there. Um, so just go through into the pipe once and it's not even 50%, right? Uh, it's an unfair coin flip basically. So. so now let's say you have 450 rubies set aside. Well, what would it look like for the wonderful wings then? Well. Still the same situation, right? If we're just going for that glider, four divided by five, but we're gonna set the exponent in this situation to six because we're gonna go through the pipe twice. And there are three high-end gliders per drain, and we can see that the odds then are 73.8%, so it's almost three to one, okay? So this is a little bit more favorable than the Rambi runner, and that's the benefit of having that extra high-end selection in the mix. Um, still, I mean, it, it's, the chances that you won't find it, right? So let's just say, uh, let, let's not go up to 900 rubies this time. Let's just say 675 then, which is a, a very safe number. It's a smart number to save to. I would never recommend spending all of that in a single special pipe. You can get much better value off your rubies than that. Uh, that much is for sure. But we'll do the same four divided by five and set the exponent then to nine because we're going to see those three high ends three times and there we go 86.6 percent so that that's pretty favorable then that's almost the equivalent of what we saw with the rambi runner for 900 rubies this is where these pipes can really present the value though right uh, let's say that you're interested in picking up the glittering parasol the candlelight flight or the wonderful wings like let's say all of the recent ones that have been picking up the modern day value uh, and this is your first time having access to any one of them then let's see how good your odds are in just a single dream then in that situation so in this case then out of the five gliders only two of them we don't want that would be the cloud glider and the other one would be the great cell right so it would be two divided by five and then we set the exponent to three because that's what that single drain would, would have us see. And there we have 93.6%. So really, uh, let's go back to the app and take a look at things here. Uh, 
To go into these pipes responsibly on a reasonable budget for most folks out there, what you're going to want to do is make sure multiple items are of desire for you, right? So that you know your heart isn't set on just the wonderful wings. Like you'd be like, okay, I'm good with either the wonderful wings or the glittering parasol or uh, the candlelight flight, and then the odds become overwhelmingly in your favor, right? Because, you know, you might, I mean, you could have it really sensational. You could pull the uh, wonderful wings all three times, which would be a, a fantastic set of pulls. But, you know, if the candlelight flight was the one you were going after then, I mean, that's that's how we see the difference in how, you know, folks out there perceive their pipe pulls, right? You know, sometimes, you know, all of us are looking for different things on our account, but really the way to put the odds in your favor is to cast a wider net net of things that we're looking to get in these non-spotlight special pipes. So of course, as always, I recommend uh, if you're going into this, just try a single drain out. Uh, you know, if you are going, if the Wonderful Wings is a must have if you're going all in, I wish you the best of luck. But uh, certainly we see the numbers there, you know, you could be in that that uh, fairly reasonable percentage group to miss out uh, entirely on that. So please be careful, folks and have fun. Uh, that's that's what's most important. So um, I think to finish off today, we'll just do the all clear pipe. Uh, how does that sound to you folks? Of course, if you found all this information that not just the theory of it, the projections of where things are going next, but also the practical application of performing the math and showing you the odds on just how good of a chance do you have to get these items for your account, uh, please do drop a like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, so here we go. Uh, I saved the glider challenge for us, folks. Uh, gotta go with the Diddy Kong, right? I saw the Diddy Kong and I was like, yep, I'm like, that's gonna be the one. Especially because I think like clear the obstacles was the last cup. I'm like, nah, we ain't doing that. Not at all. We're going with Diddy Kong. This looks like one that's occurred recently, right? Is this a, a repeat? I do remember that we had uh, the coins forming an arrow there. Um, so what I'm gonna do is hit the jump boost there. I guess we just slide all the way up. Boom, there we go. 499, maybe I should have looked it up for just a second longer on that. You did swell, Diddy, you did swell. All right, so there we go, we picked up all the grand stars. And now we get our congratulations. Thank you very much, Mario Kart Tour. Uh, Coconut Mall, how are you guys in enjoying that, right? Let's take a look at who I've been racing with here. See, we got the silver me suit. Um, there's my coin limit breaker there with King Bob on gold. And then it's probably just a lot of multiplayer selections. Uh, Lakitu for the Rainbow Roads. Little Junior there. So, uh, I mean, he's going to be the one, especially on two item slot days. Uh, for sure, it's going to be DK Junior or Dixie Kong from my account. So. Let's go, everybody. Uh, let's see something really good. We have one of these rare exclusive new gliders, right? I name them every single tour. Uh, we're not gonna wait, we're just gonna pull on this. Okay, hey, the Starry Great Sale. Tremendous value for the account. Now it's just two away from level six and it's gonna go there eventually, right? It's worth every single bit of value that it represents and uh, i mean it's it's still picking up value right you know we see it with the coconut mall on this tour so that's a really nice pull um wish you all the best of luck in your all clear pipes and uh actually we have one more we have one more freebie that we can do here it's the second one from the week one pipe we'll do that after we claim these rewards Okie dokie, here we go. Final freebie for the first week, we have a green pipe. Another glider, BBIA. All right, folks. Um, I do hope this was informational for you, really helps to provide clarity on the pipes, but also um, different ways to be looking at uh, forming the progress of your account. It's some really powerful information here. Uh, in addition to everything that's been shown, 
uh, the graphics, the charts here. I will be providing a list of the optimal cart combinations in a pinned comment below. So that will show you all the ones that the Rambi runner is associated with, but also those alternative ones, right? That's just too, inf too much information to put into a single chart. Uh, and that's all made possible from the coverage optimizer tool. So with all that out of the way, um, have a good one, everybody, and best wishes to everyone out there. See ya.